Question two. Fasciolosis, and I'm fairly sure I said that incorrectly, so I'm just going to call it disease from now on, is a disease of cattle caused by the flatworm, which I'm not going to attempt to pronounce at all. Okay, the antigens for the flatworm are found both in the blood and the milk of infected cattle, and their presence in the is the basis of an enzyme-linked immunoassay used to identify infected animals. This is an ELISA test. Okay, a positive assay is described in the figure. So monoclonal antibodies specific to the parasite um, antigens are bound to the assay plate. An infected milk sample is added to the plate. Plate is then washed with buffer. Second monoclonal antibody specific to the, an the parasite again, uh, disease, and linked to an enzyme is added. The plate is then washed with a buffer the colourless enzyme substrate is converted and is converted to a coloured product. Okay, the antibody added at step four is a monoclonal antibody. State the term of the state the meaning of the term monoclonal. So monoclonal, as far as antibodies are concerned, means that we just have antibodies that are all produced from the same clone line from same cloned line. So basically only one um, production cell. Okay. Um, or you could just say that it is only recognising one very specific part of the antigen. Right. A part two, do not worry about this one at all. Okay, because that's out. Um, you were looking at PEG. So um, if you have that in earlier notes, fair, fair enough, but it's not going to be assessed anymore. OK, if the procedure was not carried out correctly, a false positive could occur in the absence of the antigens. A false positive result. Right, not sure why it says that one there. Um, suggest a possible cause for this false positive result. OK, so a false positive result is when you get something when you shouldn't, obviously. Um, again, this is all all this stuff we've had with COVID. People are a lot more aware of what we mean by false negatives, false positives, etc, etc. So what we're expecting is that we've got a problem in the reporting. So what would be reasonable is that at this point here, at four, you've not properly washed it. So you've still got these even though they're not actually stuck to the antigen. Um, so that's the most likely one, to be honest. Um, and that the antibody's not been washed away. Okay. A pH buffer was used in all reagents and wash solutions. Explain why it's important to control pH and amino acids. Well, pH, you know, pH affects protein structure. And what you should also be aware of is that antibodies are proteins. So if you change the pH or the pH is far enough changed, then it's going to change the structure of that protein and therefore the antibody is not going to bind the way it should. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. Um, infection with the F hepatica in cattle results in weight loss and reduction of milk yield. Suggest a reason for the reduced milk yield in infected cattle. Okay, so we're looking for why an inf something that's sick would not be producing as much milk. So it's got to be that there's not as much energy available to go to the milk. So basically we're looking for somewhere that the energy is being used. So energy is used in immune response. Or, since you know the definition of a parasite, is that it uses energy or resources of the host that it's in, then the parasite might be using the energy and therefore that energy would not be available for milk. Um, that's the question.